Good evening and welcome to Artist Talk on Art on Monday, February 19th, 2024. I'm Doug Shear, ATUA president. Tonight, we welcome the Belgian artist, Veronique Saban, interviewed by her Belgian colleague, Eric Lenz. Please hold your questions or comments until later in the program, which is expected to run about 90 minutes. Veronique Saban was born in Nice, France on November 13th, 1967. She obtained a master's degree in plastic, visual and spatial arts from the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Brussels with a great distinction in 1990. Saban won a scholarship to the Museum of Tapestries and Fabric Arts in Tournai in 1991. Her artistic approach is essentially human oriented. The human face has always been present in each of Savan's works from 1988 onward, whether in painting with acrylics on canvas, Indian inks or monotypes on paper, or further in sculptures with clay that she needs in a very expressionistic manner. Landscapes began appearing around 2012, where the seascapes reflecting the North Sea of the country where Saban now lives, or the umbrella pines of her childhood spent in the south of France. Her achievements in the public domain include the following. Creation of a painting for the launch of the Opel Corsa 2000, participation in the Belgian Horse Parade, development of wine labels for Bordeaux and Côte de Rhone, designing patterns for scarves, live painting on a wall in the railway station of La Chapelle, creation of deluxe limited edition box sets for the Robert Le French Dictionary. Eric Lenz is an industrial engineer who has worked for more than 20 years in the European Union for the European Commission in Brussels as a software administrative engineer. Since childhood, he has been passionate about art, visiting galleries and museums around the world. He interacts with artists and helps them present themselves via Zoom interviews, perhaps very much like this one. He's also passionate about digital NFT art and has investigated artificial intelligence for art uses. And now, Eric Lenz interviewing Veronique Savant. Eric. You uh, do? Uh, unmute yourself, Eric. Unmute yourself, sorry. And Veronique, unmute yourself, mm -hmm. please. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank, um, you. thank you very much, uh, Doug. Um, it's very, it's really a pleasure to be invited uh, by you, and that we can take part in the artists to talk talk on to talks on art uh, event. Um, you gave already a very good introduction, so uh, I will add uh, some. Uh, um numbers um so if i see in the bi biography of uh, veronique Sabon, she has done about 35 exhibitions in belgium and um she has also uh be present in a museum being present in a museum in czechoslovakia in europe she has uh, done galleries in paris too i see at the moment and she appeared also in an event in uh, Spain. Um, we are now at the moment that we are uh, expanding our uh, art of Veronique Savant into the United States and in other countries in Europe, and we are very proud of that. I just want to add um, a little uh, story from a curator of a Museum of Fine Arts, which is written in 2002 about the artist. And it is like this, uh, Veronique Sabon is one of the best young expressionist painters of her time. 
She works with ardor and powerful gestural. Virtuoso, she punctuates her paintings while giving to the shape the ability to deliver an evanescent vision of reality and still full of strength. Their faces, midway between abstraction and figuration, are so many appeals to the eye and therefore to dialogue. Her art is full of humanism and discoveries, an interesting study of the human soul. So that's a little bit uh, a beautiful story of what uh, Veronique uh, has made until now. Um, we will start um, uh, the uh, PowerPoint now. I will give you uh, just an overview of what we will say today. Um, we start with the presentation, uh, with a small introduction still, and then we will do the presentation of the artworks from 1988 until now. So that's the whole career of Veronique. Um, we speak about paintings, or we will show you images of paintings from of sculptures, monotypes, Indian ink, landscapes and seascapes. And then we will do afterwards an interview with about 13 questions with big answers. And after that interview, there you can ask questions uh, uh, in the audience and we will, uh, or Veronique will reply to them. And at the end, we show you the website and the contact data of Veronique. So do you all see my PowerPoint? Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. So let me introduce a little bit. Uh, so um, Doug said it already, Veronique is born in Nice, in France, in the south of France, in the good weather. And uh, in November in 1967, she obtained a, set, a master's degree in uh, plastic, visual, and uh, special arts from the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Brussels. So Veronique has lived uh, the first 10 years in the south of France, and then she came with her family and her brother to Belgium, to Brussels especially, and she lives here now for a whole time. She competed also and uh, got a scholarship at the Museum of uh, Tapestries and Fabric Arts in Tournai in Belgium in 1991. So, as said by Doug already, the human face has always been present from 1988 on, whether in painting with acrylics on canvas, and her artistic approach is essentially human-oriented, but it, uh, she made also Indian inks on monotypes on papers, and she made also sculptures uh, with a with the clay that she needed in a very expressionist way. So landscapes appeared around 2012, whether it were seascapes reflecting the North Sea, that's the a quite heavy sea uh, at the coast in Belgium or in Europe, and uh, uh, it's the country where she lives now in Belgium or the umbrella pines of her childhood, which she, she saw in the south of France. So um, that's a little bit that's said already by uh, Doug here. Um, so I will start uh, first to sound the invitation, which is sent by the colleagues of uh, Doug and Miriam. And uh, there was a first painting on, on it, and it had the name L'Or d'Autre in French. In English, it's uh, the gold from the other. Of the other. Of the other. And um, I want to ask uh, Veronique what uh, were her feelings when she created this uh, painting uh, and how she created it. The, the word is for you, uh, the microphone is for you, uh, Veronique. 
Thank you. First of all, I want to say good evening, Mr. President, Miriam that is not here, and uh, all the audience. And uh, thank you for this invitation to talk about art uh, beyond the borders. And I'm glad to be take part at the 50th uh, anniversary of Atuas. Well, so now to speak about the painting that is on the invitation, Lors de l'autre, which I think is the gold of the other, is um, it's because I wanted to suggest a recipro reciprocal love, an esteem for the other, a knowing glance, and a mutual understanding. Well, so I will not be long about this painting. And yes. No, yeah. of the other. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, there was also another uh, picture in uh, the invitation from a horse. Um, a yellow and uh, orange horse, ah, and yes. um, we had um, a lot of these horses, Enkos, uh, in the streets in Belgium a few years ago, and so um, it's, uh, my... you made also one. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, his name is Three uh, H. So, for happy, healthy horse. And I will explain you what is the uh, Belgium horse parade. So it was an event in uh, Brussels in 2005 uh, in order to collect mo money for charity. And uh, so some companies commissioned artists to paint large sculptures of here white horses that they have already bought. And then once they give it to the artist to be painted, and after uh, they are exhibited in major cities in Belgium. And after that, they are uh, sold at auction. And the benefits will go to charity. And uh, in my case here, uh, the sale of my house took place uh, at the Brussels uh, Marriott Hotel. And it was commissioned by IFA Europe, which is International Federation for Animal Health. That's why I have painted things in relation to the health of the animal on the horse. And after um, the process, the, the, pro, the auction that is done, the money will go to the association Diadis, which uh, Association for the Allocation of Assistance Dogs to the Blind and Handicapped People. Okay. Voilà, that's the story of uh, this horse. Okay, uh, thank you. Eric, very much. Are, you, are you going to show us these images or, or just the. Uh, well, um, I have them not perhaps. Um, can you show them here, the horse, which is on the invitation? Ah, okay, okay. For them who had no invitation, and the first painting, perhaps on a, on the other paper, uh, was this one. Uh, the gold of the other. Yeah, the gold right. of the other. Yes, it's Thank one you. eye for two. Thank yeah. you. Okay, we will start with the paintings from 1988 on when she started, and the first painting is this one. And the name is Armand. Yes, so uh, it, it's a very in a very figure, figurative uh, way that I have uh, painted uh, this first portrait. It was on paper uh, with uh, watercolor, uh, which makes it uh, soft and transparent. It was. Uh, it's a, I gave uh, this painting a name, Armand, because it was a student that uh, I met uh, at the academy and who had uh, impressed me. Um, otherwise, generally, all the portraits are made uh, of uh, my imagination. Thank you, Veronique. So we go on to the next painting. This one, Pen et Deception. Yes. 
so pain and disappointment. Um, so this portrait uh, depicts a mixture of disappointment and uh, unfulfilled hopes, leading to a feeling of sadness. And uh, these feelings is uh, appropriate to the way uh, I treat uh, the, the paper. So first I paint on the paper and after uh, I torn and reconstruct in an unstructured way. And that's make integral part uh, of the character's feelings. Mm -hmm. uh, Edith, uh, may I ask you, do you understand this, Edith, or is it difficult? I understand everything. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Doug, you understand this? Okay. Yes, it's, so it's clear enough. It's definitely clear enough. Okay. And the art, the art also has a voice. <laughs> Please? The art also speaks. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah. So the next uh, blue painting here is Storm Pets. Yes, uh, Tempest then. And uh, it's uh, Tempest is, is the inner uh, storm of the character, of course. And uh, I mean internal conflicts, dilemmas, and uh, problem of the choice. Let's say it's a state of uh, emotional turbulence. Well, and I uh, treat it in the same way that the previous one. Uh, okay. It's in 1990 we are at the moment. So we go on. In 1992, we have Home à la cigarette. Yes. So as you can see, uh, the man is not well. So he thinks that by smoking cigarette, uh, uh, it will be better and as an escape. But uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, not the case. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. um, do we have the title in English from this cigarette? Uh, yes, it's it's... Cigarette Man. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. We go on to the next stress. Stress. So there, I don't, uh, there is no need to explain. Uh, <laughs> it goes in all di direction. Uh, <laughs> We can go to the other one. We see there is much stress on the screen and perhaps also in the in the room here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. You want to drink a little bit? Uh, Thank you. <laughs> we go on to the next painting. This is a black painting. And uh, what's your presentation Edith. for this? Uh, it, what's uh, your description? For editor. This? Editor in chief. Ah. Mm -hmm. And um, so, <clears throat> yes, I see him now. Yes, editor. It's a bit a caricature of the editor in chief I wanted to portray, set against a paper background with letters printed in keeping with his profession. And uh, he's smoking a cigar and thinking uh, because he has, of course, uh, received uh, manuscripts and uh, he, he is, he's thinking, uh, um, does he will publish or not? That's it. Okay. The next one is this one. And this is a woman, La Femme qui Bai. Yawning woman, yes. So it's work on the paper uh, where the subject is painted and then torn to form another composition. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, here we have um, perhaps a man or a woman. I don't a know man, exactly. Yes, it's a man. a man. And the title in French is Seul avec soi. Which is alone with oneself. And uh, the character is caught up in uh, a kind of uh, positive uh, solitude, which allows him to stop time and reconnect with himself. Okay. 
we have now seen the first four or five years. Does anyone have already a question or why not? No questions at the moment. Then we go on. Well, I, I think I think they're intending to hold them until later. Okay. Yeah. So the next uh, painting is Mathieu Brut. Yes. So uh, from uh, this time, I begin uh, to paint on uh, on canvas. Uh, and uh, it's more resistant uh, medium, of course, and than the paper. And uh, I wanted in this painting to try uh, out uh, other materials. So uh, I wanted to achieve other effects. And for instance, here I have uh, mixed uh, sand with uh, impastos of paint. And you use acryl here on, on canvas, I think. Eh? Yes, I begin also with uh, acryl. Yeah. Yes. You never used oil painting, I think. Eh? No, because it doesn't dry uh, quicker enough. Yeah. And uh, as I don't want uh, some uh, uh, paintings to, to be mixed, it's better uh, to take acryl. Okay. Um... Well, um, there is Miruna, you say um, to maximize your zoom in. Oh, it's to the clients, I think, because I can't maximize the, the painting. It's yeah, it's for the clients. It, yeah, it's, it's for, for, the for them. Okay, it's not for us. Yeah. Okay, we go on to the next painting, Mauvais Song. Yes. And this is a, a woman, I think. <laughs> yes, it is indeed. And it means in uh, English, uh, getting bad blood. blood. And it's a play on words because it's a, a pregnant a woman painted red in allusion to the expression getting bad blood because uh, well, she worries about uh, her, her future baby. Okay, thank you. We are in 1994 and then we are going to 1995 with Asuri. Yes, so... He looks uh, greedy to me with his big mouth and uh, voila, hence uh, the title. Mm. Thank you. We go on. Still 1995, Napa. Uh -huh, yeah. And here you use more colors, I think. Yes, uh, this is uh, a, a very sad uh, painting. Uh, Napa means uh, don't go away. And uh, it was inspired by uh, the death of an acquaintance uh, from an overdose. So I uh, transposed uh, the, the pain that uh, her family and friends uh, must have uh, experienced. It's a cry of uh, revolt uh, and injustice because of drugs, because you see, of course, uh, the um, la seringue. So. I don't know the 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 pick the. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I don't know the word, but you understand. I think a hyper a hypodermic needle. Yes, yes, exactly. Thank you, thank you, Douglas. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, that's another one. Nu agenouillé. Agenouillé, yes. Kneeling, yes. <laughs> Cleaning uh, nude, uh, I wanted to paint a nude, which is not uh, so often, and uh, in not in a classical way, by making it fit into the canvas, uh, it had uh, to, to kneel down to fit in. <laughs> we go on, we are in 1999, Serenity. Yes. Serenity. For serenity. me, it appears like uh, serenity. Large portraits on canvas oh. with, yeah, Sorry. with uh, no problem with a change of uh, color palette. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we see um, a special nose, which is in all your later paintings. I think it appears that you paint the faces with a long nose, isn't it? It's typically. Veronique Sabon, I think. That is your uh, observation. I uh, 
Yes, I don't realize it especially. Yes. <laughs> but maybe you're right. <laughs> This is the next one, Reflexion Nostalgique, in yes. 2000. Yes. Uh, it's a project of uh, a woman in her nostalgic uh, thoughts, because uh, nostalgia uh, is often present uh, in my paintings, as it's a feeling that uh, has been uh, with me uh, for years. And, uh, well, I tenderly uh, recall past moments, whether from my childhood or events that uh, have had a positive impact uh, on me. And when I think back on them, I bring uh, them back to life uh, for, for, for the moment and uh, the nostalgia is, uh, is coming. And it can be also... Uh, Tri treasured by music or uh, an object from the past or a photograph and uh, that suddenly uh, plunges me into the past. Okay, before and, we go to, yes, you want to add something still? Uh, thank you, yes, just sometimes I put uh, hands uh, under uh, the chin and it's associated with uh, moments of uh, reflections. Okay. Hence the titles I give them, uh, which often contain the word uh, reflection. Okay. Before we go to the next painting, you want to drink still uh, a little bit? No, it's okay. It's thank okay. You. <laughs> okay. Maybe uh, you. No, thank you. Um, so these are four paintings in one painting, four faces in one uh, painting. Face. face à face ah. with. Yes. So face à face, uh, I did the whole series. I call face à face, in which I show uh, several faces, either in the dialogue uh, with each other or represented in their individuality, um, each with its own expression. So this was uh, face à face number eight, and I think the next one you will show it's. Um, Yes, well, I see this one is already a bigger painting also from 80 to 100 centimeters. I'm apologizing me because I think you work in inches. Uh, ah, yes. uh, I don't know how many inches this is, but it's rather big. It's um, the size of a whole door, I think. <laughs> so next one is uh, this one. Also uh, a face à face, um, but the street with maybe in... Um more abstract way or fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And this one is a very special one. Uh, ah, yes. What uh, is the name? Attente de l'imprévu. This means waiting for the unexpected. And uh, this is a mixed uh, media painting on canvas uh, with gold leaf. Uh, that I brought back from uh, an India temples uh, and uh, I applied it to create a golden yellow background. And uh, there, the, in India, the yellow is a sacred color associated with uh, meditation, instruction and knowledge. And it refers to the sun and the light. So I felt that this character, deep in thought and uh, waiting uh, for the unexpected, for light, should have this background full of meaning for him. Okay. And um, Go on. Yeah, the, the title of this painting plays on oppositions because uh, we never know when the unexpected uh, will happen, of course. And here the character is waiting for it. An unexpected event that comes as a surprise, a ray of sunshine in his uh, monotonous, monotonous life. I uh, prefer it uh, personally very hard. I feel uh, good. I find it a, a very beautiful uh, painting, this one. Uh, we, go on to, we go on to the next, and that is... Pose coquelicot. Yes. How do Pop you translate that? Poppy, poppy break, uh, because of the color. 
and uh, once again oppose uh, <clears throat> a moment of uh, nostalgia or time for daydreams. <clears throat> okay, we are already in 2003 now. We go on, and this is a nice one, Fan Suave. What yes. is the translation? Suave uh, woman. Um, yes, and so it's a charming woman. is painted in a very uh, spontaneous way in her hair. The brush is a little uh, crazy. And uh, the eyes are as often uh, asymmetrical, and I find her uh, a certain uh, sensuality. But, but maybe I'm the only one. But <laughs> no, it's a very beautiful one. Is also I want to buy them all. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so but it's, next... uh, it's sold already. This oh, it's one. Sold Sorry. Already. <laughs> <laughs> I chose another one. Okay. Okay, we go on. And this is Ardor. Ardor, yes. So it's painted in uh, fiery colors, fiery colors. Uh, I wanted the way I painted to match this man's fire temperament, which is why I used uh, broad, spontaneous, and uh, vig vigorous uh, strokes. Okay. Next one is this one, uh, a face to face still. Yes. The first yeah. one, 11. Yes, 11. So it's uh, again uh, several faces, either in dialogue uh, with uh, each other or re represented uh, in their individualities with uh, their own expression. Hmm. Okay, we go on. This one, La Routine de. Yes, so the red head. Ah. Uh, just a, a sweet and melancholy uh, portrait with the allure of the uh, 30, uh, les années 30, the, the, 30s the, years. The 30s. The 30s. The 30s, I think. Mm. But it's made in 2006, however. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we go on. This is black and white. Yes, indeed. Uh, enfant en hiver. Yes, uh, it's uh, halfway between uh, abstraction and uh, figuration. Yeah. Okay. And then the Venus. This is the yellow or a, a touch? Yes, it's ochre. Ochre, yes. yes. A touch of Venus. And when I finish uh, these paintings, uh, it became uh, clear to me that uh, it resembled uh, to the famous uh, Venus, the birth of Venus uh, from uh, Botticelli. Or, but also, uh, this was uh, by uh, no means uh, my original intention. And sometimes I myself, uh, I am surprised by uh, the path the painting takes as I painted, which was not my uh, original uh, intention. And here okay. is the case. Yes. Okay, nice. I put another picture, another painting from you behind in my background, I by guess. the way. <laughs> ah, okay. um, so we go on, and there we have now in 2007, Trois Faces pour Three Faces for a Memory. But here um, there is four faces. <laughs> so it's important to understand uh, this uh, revealing uh, title of the painting, Three Faces uh, for a Memory, because in fact, the third portrait at the bottom is a double. I don't see if you see it. There is a kind of uh, profile and face suggesting the fourth face which is the souvenir and enfin, the, the memory. Mm -hmm. Okay. And here, um, Veronique made also a few, uh, presented a few musicians in uh, paintings or on paper, I yes. don't know. Ex yeah, yeah, ex yeah. Explain uh, it's violinist, so, violinist, violinist. Don't don't the, 
Yes, the work uh, on the musician. Maybe we can uh, show the the three uh, paintings uh, yeah, one after is. the other. Yeah, yeah. we uh, have slow. the three here. Voilà. So you see, there is violinist and yeah, also and pipe pianist, uh, violinist talentueux, and the pianist also. And the concentration. Well, exactly. So yeah. Three. So you have an idea of uh, the style. And the work uh, of the musicians uh, was inspired by a violin sonata by Vivaldi. Um, when I see the violinist uh, expression was uh, so um, impressive that uh, it gave me um, the invite to, to paint a musician, a serial physician, while playing with his instruments, the violinist or a pianist brings out all the intensity of uh, expression on his face. And I enjoy portraying it. So it's an uh, incorporating a uh, piece of uh, sheet uh, music as a background uh, for the painting. Did you paint this on uh, paper or on uh, canvas? No, it's on paper because yeah. uh, again I take uh, sheet uh, uh, music and I I, I, I turn them and uh, I stick and make uh, some uh, composition and and paint okay. on it. Thank you. We will switch over to the new to the new one, and that's a very typical face you have uh, make uh, more from this time. So, Les Mauves du Temps. Les Mauves du Temps, the purple times, yes. In this portrait, once again, the thoughts are elsewhere, in the past, in uh, the questioning of the passage of time. Often, only this person knows it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Inaccessible Amour. Inaccessible Love, yes. So um, you can see here the man uh, that has uh, the the man dreams, let's say, uh, of uh, the woman who loves him, but uh, he knows he can never con conquer her. So it's like an uh, inaccessible love. Uh, her love is placed in uh, in his hand high up as uh, if on a pedestal and inaccessible then. Mm -hmm. This is a very beautiful uh -huh. one, complicity. Ah, yes. So the complicity, this theme, yes, I like it uh, very much because it's a very important theme uh, in life. Uh, uh, part and of being uh, a couple, understanding each other without uh, needing to talk, uh, to complement uh, each other, for instance, by filling in your partner's gaps and providing what he or she needs, to complement each other by helping each other with their own weakness. So exchange, sharing, respect, fulfillment. For me, all this comes under the theme of uh, complicity. It's uh, the basis of love, of love and the long-term uh, relationship. Mm. Okay, thank you, Veronique. Um... We'll go on to the next. We are at the moment already in 2011. Yeah. Jeune fille endormie. Yes, the sleeping uh, young girl. So it's uh, the softness, the dreams, and uh, the pleasure of this pose uh, curled up in the square of uh, the canvas. Thanks. And then we have a black and white one, Fumiko. Which yes. uh, seems to be Japanese or? Yes, some influence indeed. Uh, so here, once again, sweetness, dreams, daydreams. She almost melts into an imaginary scene to the right. Yeah. Okay. 
You see me, Teddy? I see you are very looking very interesting. <laughs> so this is Le Brum Matinal, mm -hmm. 2013. Yes, the morning mists. So background and face are intimately linked. Deep eyes crossed by an imaginary mist. It's a beautiful uh, painting. Thank you. <laughs> These are connivence diptych. Yes, so connivence uh, is the sister of complicity in my previous painting. Uh, the couple is uh, represented by uh, a diptych. So two people who are dis distinct but linked. You can see a slight uh, continuity of uh, line linking one painting with the other, starting from the man's left eye and going up to the woman's bottom. Uh, they don't need words. They are connected to each other by the very strong bond of connivance. Thank you. 2015, one mind. Yes. We are still on the same uh, theme of being, of two beings becoming uh, one, as uh, Lord de l'autre, the gold of the other. They are recurring themes, complicity, connivence, reciprocity, respect, sharing, connection, understanding each other without needing to speak. Hmm. Okay. Uni yes, Uni United. United. Yes. We are in the love area, the fusion of uh, two beings who have found each other. It's about shared trust and uh, silent complicity. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is Lord de l'autre yes, that we I, have seen in the invitation yes, already. I speak in the but you already can have a look to in the painting. Um okay. So we talked about it in in the introduction. Yes indeed. And then Luantan Asia. Far away Asia. So Japan is a country that fascinates me and, uh, well, uh, it has inspired many of my paintings, uh, including Luantanazi, Shining Nature, which we will see later, Fumiko, which we have just seen now, and the my last painting uh, you will see uh, uh, from this year, uh, Kimono Love. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will switch to another background in the meantime. And there we go to the next one. Mm -hmm. This one is, I can't see the title, Pesibility. Yes, peacefulness. So time seems to have stopped under this tree. And uh, the support is uh, also special because it's a 3D uh, canvas. So a bit kind of a box format with the branches that I can continue over the side. Yes, you paint on the sides always. I also I think in all your paintings, eh? Yes. They are all your paintings are about two, three centimeters thick, I think, and you paint on the sides. Yes. Also, eh? So it's not need uh, to frame if we don't want it can stand alone. Yeah. This black and blue, black blue face. Ah, yes. Alors, black blue face <laughs> is one of those rare paintings where a few brush strokes say it all. Uh, I'm all about uh, less is more. So a creative brush, a gesture that uh, is extended by the brush and guided by an inspiring force emanating from deep inside me. So it's the ultimate inspiration that uh, doesn't uh, uh, come uh, often, <laughs> I have to say. Okay, very good. 
So if we go on to the next, that's a uh, purple. Visage indigo, yes, indigo face. So it's painted uh, in much the same spirit uh, as uh, black blue face, a plain background with uh, a few lines uh, representing uh, the face. Thank you. And then we come here. This is a very uh, different painting from the very other famous, uh, personality, Josephine Baker. Yes, uh, it's um, with Josephine Baker. It's uh, one of the few times uh, I spent a well-known person. The challenge was to portray her without over representing uh, her. And uh, well, she's a, a woman of uh, contrast. Uh, we know her. So with exuberance, dancing, but at the same time, a figure of uh, the French resistance uh, during the Second World War. Mm -hmm. Douceur African. African sweetness, yes. For the past two years, um, I've, uh, I've been discovering the pleasure of painting on plain back background. I treat the, the painting as a kind of uh, negative image. So uh, transforming dark areas into light and vice versa. Okay. That's a black and white and a little bit red, a black square. Uh, yes. So um, the same on the same spirit like yeah. the previous one, uh, going to the essence in a few broad strokes, summing up the expression. And... You're already in 2020 now, huh? Ah, yes. Okay. It's That's the next name. one, Shining Nature, about you, which you spoke uh, a few minutes ago already, I think. Yes, indeed. Uh, Shining Nature, so um, it's a painting. I enjoy painting a Japanese inspired tree here. And uh, I've had uh, some uh, green glitter on the leaves, but I don't think we can uh, notice it on the it picture. In the no. picture now, <clears throat> But um, branches uh, is inclined, uh, sinuous and tortuous in way. And sometimes uh, I, I like to switch uh, from faces to landscape to change uh, the atmosphere. And uh, well, I'm about to immerse myself in uh, different uh, things. Okay. Elle et lui. Doesn't appear. Uh, what's the reason? Ah, here it is. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and and we, yes, she and him. So the pleasure of uh, working the background differently uh, and with color and placing uh, uh, two faces with contrasting, spontaneous features. And this time, uh, the couple is positioned differently with the man in the upper right square, uh, watching over the woman uh, in the up in the down uh, square, it's uh, like a gra guardian of uh, good intentions. Okay, it's very recent. This uh, painting, rather recent. Mm -hmm. Um, this is also a new one, uh, I think, a uh, square head. Yes, yeah, square head. Uh, I'm uh, taking a different uh, artistic approach there, going for uh, maximum uh, sim simplification against a worked background that blends in with the face. And this uh, painting is uh, the, the main uh, figure of uh, the invitation of my exhibition that is taking place now uh, in Brussels at uh, La Maison de la Francité. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a very new from 2024. We are together. Yes. So uh, the theme of the couple is very present as a start of this new year. And here with the uh, 
the title We Are Together, I've made a little uh, wink by writing you, you see, and and we expect uh, to, to, to say that I will write me, but I've just uh, put my signature. That's why I say uh, we are together. Okay. Um, this is the last, last painting, painting normal yeah. uh, portrait painting, I think. Kimono Love. Yes. So once again, the theme of the couple is very present and here uh, with uh, Asian influence. It's a very nice picture, I find. It's one of my favorites, this one. Yeah. Yes. So I think we are around with the normal portrait pictures. So we will have a look to the sculptures which are made between 1991 and 1995. Um, so the first one is Clan Deuil Malbré. Ah, I can show it maybe. Yes. I please. have it behind. Yes, I will give it to you. Thank you. Oh, whoops. Yeah, so you... Is that the one? Yes, it is the one. I don't see at all. Yes, like that. Voilà. Mm -hmm. You can turn it around, perhaps, or you want also like that. Voilà. And this is in marble or marble? no, no, it's uh, in clay with la technique du raku. Ah. Okay. Then, so yeah. if you want, you can show all the um, the sculptures, uh, and after I will uh, talk about them. Okay, this is Delgado. Mm -hmm. This is Le Bleu de l'Esprit, de. Mm -hmm. How is it in English? Mm. Le Bleu de l'Esprit. Uh, the the blues of the spirit yes. and it was a, a, again a play with words because i have the blues but also it is the color blue so. ah, that's good. Mm -hmm. this one is long singe mm -hmm. that's the the how do you say that in english monkey 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 man monkey man yes quelque chose de l'île de Pâques. Um, how mm -hmm. do we translate that? Do you know? Il de Pâques. It's, uh, uh, it's an island. Place, Il yes. de Pâques, it, uh, it looks like uh, one of these uh, statues. That's why I, I've I, called him uh, like that. Okay. So that's for the sculptures. Then we have a few monotypes. I, I will speak about the sculpture, I, maybe. You, will, you or... will say something about the sculptures, yes? yes? Because, well, so... Uh, just after uh, graduating from the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Brussels, I decided uh, to enroll in an evening courses uh, in sculpture. So clay uh, appealed to me because it's a malle malleable material which suited me well and didn't uh, require uh, colossal strength. So only the classes that was proposed uh, was pottery with the making of tea sets, uh, plant pots or plates. So everything was uh, utilitarian. But finally, uh, after explaining uh, my approach to the teacher and expressing my desire to create my own faces that I had in paintings, but in 3D with the clay, he accepted me into his classes and so for four years. So starting with a block of clay, I worked on my faces, kneading and hollowing them out so as to retain only their kint essence. Between the full and the hollow, the face finds the expression oscillating between humor and gravity. Far from the Apollonian ideals, it's the interiority of the characters that matters most to me. 
these asymmetrical, distorted faces make them unique and endearing. They look at you, call out to you, question you, and a discreet complicity, again, <laughs> is established between the work and the viewer. Some wear fire and glassed, others smoked or treated using the Japanese technique of raku. Alors, uh, I don't know if you want, uh, now that I explain you the raku technique or, or not, um, as you wish, and as we have time or not. I don't think no, the raku, no. the, the technology of raku is not necessary. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we, it's two, yeah, here it's two o'clock, two o'clock at night. So we have still half an hour, uh, by the way, uh, Veronique. Uh, by the way, uh, Lille de Park in English is Easter Island. Uh, someone translated it. Ah, uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we will go over to monotypes, okay. which uh, you made between 1996 and 1998. And here we have a first monotype. So show, here, sorry. Show them all. Yes, like okay. that. And after I give a, a small yeah. explanation. Yes, thank you. We can uh, go a little bit faster because of the lack of time we have. So that was it. Yeah, okay. You can say something about it. Yes, uh, but the a monotype uh, is a print resulting from the impression on paper of a composition that has not been engraved, but painted directly on a metal plate, and which then passes under the press, and the result is always a unique print, one on one. That's you have only one uh, print. Well, yes, only you can, one. You cannot make two of them. No, no. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So we will go a little bit faster now. Uh, we Here we have the Indian inks. Mm -hmm. Between 2010 and 2013, you made them. Um, the first one is this one. Uh, then we have these uh, trees. Nice trees. Yes, the pine parasol, pine trees. This is the sea, I think. Mm -hmm. The storm. <laughs> Voilà. So with Indian Indian inks, I can work on seascapes and landscapes with a deep black, which, when diluted, gives rise to a whole range of magnificent shades of grey. That's why I like to use this Indian ink. Mm -hmm. Okay. We go on uh, landscapes and seascapes between yeah. 2012 and 2021. With uh, colored images here from uh, landscapes, seascapes, white water. This is a Kumlian Wee diptych. This is a very beautiful one, a red one. It's subjective. It's, uh, yeah. This is very recent from this year, Les Roches Bleues. Mm -hmm. And Flottaison. No. Yes. The, yes. Okay, we can. So I will just explain and we can stay on this uh, image. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, with uh, the, the, when I paint scenes uh, other than humans, such as tree or seascapes, mm -hmm. I find uh, my inspiration in nature and the uh, environment around me. So, uh, or in memory of my childhood, childhood spent in the south of France, like Dougal said, uh, surrounded by umbrella pines, which I like to paint uh, also with India ink. 
And for the seascapes, I co it comes either from the stormy gray North Sea of uh, the country where I'm living now, or also it can come from my imagination with uh, the last land, uh, seascape, for instance, that I've called flottaison, which, voila, I put a tree in the sea and uh, this is uh, not realistic. At all. Voila. So I think we have um, we have all shown the all, the, all the style, uh, all the periods. So we will uh, go on, go over on the interview. Uh, I will ask you uh, a few questions. Um, um, perhaps you need to drink a little bit of water. No, it's okay. no? Thank okay. you. So the first question I will ask you in general is, can you tell us about your journey, career as an artist? How did you begin? Ah, hello. <laughs> so, um, I had a passion for creation since childhood, which began with children's workshops, mixing colors, drawing, modeling, plasticine, and so on. So for me, Later on, being an artist was an obvious, an obvious choice. But uh, my family had advised me to go to the university to improve my chances to get a good job later. <laughs> so I went to university and enrolled for one year in uh, the language and linguistic section there. But uh, language was presented uh, in a very technical way, dissected and analyzed in every sense. So I didn't like it so much. So I wanted uh, something more creative and I decided to follow my wish, which was uh, to going to an art school. So another family meeting to announce my choice. And at the end, they were very understanding, telling me that what I would do with patience, I would do it uh, well. So I went to the art school uh, at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Brussels. And uh, I finally decided not to go to the painting section, but uh, the textile uh, creation one. When uh, I didn't sign up for painting session, I told myself that uh, I will keep my individuality of style and own expression, because I've noticed that uh, you can often recognize the painting of a student that uh, has learned with uh, this or uh, that uh, teachers. So, of course, there were uh, joint courses for art history, drawing, quick sketches, still life, and so on. And then I realized that it was the drawing of the human being that attracted me most and to emphasize expression through the eyes. As we say, eyes are the reflection of the soul. Since then, I spent many portraits, some more figurative and other more abstract. And in the beginning of my paintings, uh, yes, in the 90, uh, they were uh, much more tormented and no less. Well, perhaps with uh, time, we become more philosophical and less rebellious against everything. Mm. Yes, Eric. Okay. Um, second question. Uh, we have still time. Yes. Uh, who or what are your biggest influences in your art? Uh -huh. So, uh, the greatest influence is the human being and the observation of humanity. The exploration of the human soul is uh, infinite, infinite, 
and part of it is reflected in my portraits, emotions, inner conflicts, and existential questions are a source of inspiration, and of course, love as a leitmotiv. But also nature, trees, rocks, rough seas, and traveling, discovering other places, other culture, and visiting exhibition has certainly had an impact on my art too. Okay. Um, we go on with the questions because of, we have not much time. Uh, influence of a mentor or icon or some favorite artworks and why? Um, for instance, Francis Bacon is a painter that uh, I appreciate very much. Uh, he's, he has a great uh, emotional intensity. He can put that in his painting. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, which are often the portrait are of or the the character are often isolated in a, a visual cage, and he has a unique, a powerful style, where he shows human pain and anguish in so a particular way. And yes, I like also the way of painting movement of the face. Or oh, there is also Jean-Michel Basquiat, for instance. What I really appreciate uh, about his paintings is the mm -hmm. authenticity with the narrative side of his life's journey. Yeah. Right. His life matches uh, totally to his paintings. He translates his this into graffiti on canvas where you can see a lot of symbols, words, and the imprint of his uh, African roots. And I like the way of he put colors, good colorist and uh, good uh, comp make good composition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Now maybe if I can uh, say to, to you, uh, Mr. President, uh, if you don't want we continue uh, with our question and you prefer to open uh, the microphone to your to the audience is up to you, of course. I oh, where's my vision? I think you read my mind. <laughs> yeah, the questions are good, and the art is you know has told a story uh, in itself. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be very good to allow the audience to. Uh, mm -hmm. And I would recommend, if you want to speak, just unmute yourself uh, and start speaking, either with a comment or a question, of course, either either way. I could start it going by saying, uh, I knew pretty much from the beginning when I was watching that there was there was going to be an Asian or Japanese influence in in a lot of the work and it, it's um that's interesting also though the trees often look very very french very look, french yeah the trees look very much like those trees that are in the countryside that are bare of their uh, foliage you know that are sort of bare branches um and and in that sense they're French, but um, but the Asian influence and even the way you do your signature, which which is the chop, you know, the stamp, uh, is yes, it's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And go ahead, anyone else who would like to jump in, please do. <clears throat> is there any question for? Some people. If mm -hmm. not, you certainly could go back, uh, Eric, to one or two more uh, of your own questions. Uh, what are your challenges, uh, Veronique? <clears throat> Question four. Ah, yes. 
So the challenge is to keep renewing uh, myself and try to reinterpret it constantly. Another major, major challenge, which is more uh, internalized, is to overcome the doubts that um, haunt sometimes uh, my creative works. And the evolution of uh, or challenge in my expression of portraiture is to paint it in a more abstract way, avoiding uh, facial contour and manage to express a lot in a few brush strokes or a splash of paints. Um, I managed to bring out the eyes and all the emotions that goes with them, like in black blue face, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so now we have still a few minutes. Can question five? Can you describe your creative process? How do you approach a new piece of work? Well, I think I will repeat myself by saying that it is the mankind uh, around me and. Uh, well, that I'm a bit like a, a sponge uh, taking everything and uh, after digesting what I've seen and I will put it on the canvas, so. Mm. Yeah, okay. Um, how do you overcome creative blocks, creative blocks? Ah, yes, it happens also. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when I sometimes have a creative block, uh, knowing me, it's better not to be stubborn and uh, because the, the result will be a failure. So it's better to decide to stop, to go out, to have a walk or uh, to, to, to eat something and to come and come back later or the day after with a new fresh perspective to continue the, the painting. Uh, there will be more uh, chance to carry on properly. Okay. Doc, Doc, do we have still a minute or? Um, I think it would be good if you can put up the slide that shows where they can see more work and, and uh, okay. events or whatever. So that's the last one. This that's one. Leave that up for a minute. Mm -hmm. uh, and okay. while you do so, I would like to thank Eric Lenz and Veronique Savant. Uh, and I would like to thank everyone that joined us tonight uh, and mention that um, uh, this will be on YouTube either this evening or tomorrow. So if you have friends or colleagues that you would like to direct to seeing it, you can direct them to Artist Talk on Art on YouTube, where we also have over 100 uh, other recordings currently deployed and for viewing. Um, I, want, I would like to thank Miriam Deutsch who helped to organize the event uh, and also our, our board, our volunteers, our advisors, et cetera. Um, and thank you very much for being with us tonight, despite the late hour. I, I very much appreciate that. Uh, and uh, thank you for your effort and thank you for uh, being with us, and uh, it was lovely. I enjoyed every minute. Thank you very much to you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You it's a pleasure. Wonderful. You were so wonderful. I enjoyed you so much. Thank you very much. Oh, that makes me really big pleasure. Thank you. If you say you were nervous tonight, I can imagine when you're not nervous, because <laughs> you were wonderful.